Hi, and welcome to this section of the Advanced Calculus 2 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to expand your mathematical bag of tricks, and we're going to talk about hyperbolic functions, which is a section that's going to be in your calculus textbook that talk about these hyperbolic functions. And of course, since you're studying calculus, you're not only going to learn about the functions, you're going to learn about their de derivatives, OK? So the rates of change of these functions, how to take derivatives of hyperbolic functions. So the first thing you might ask yourself is, what is a hyperbolic function, and why do I care? Well, there's, uh, I guess the easiest way to answer that question is, uh, I'm of two minds about it. It's important that you know what a hyperbolic function is and to know that they exist and to know what they look like because you'll find them cropping up in engineering and in your study of physics. They'll come up, you know, sometimes you'll talk about a system and, you, and it'll end up reducing down to a sine or a cosine and, and that'll be sort of the way the system behaves. Sometimes in some systems, uh, you'll see a hyperbolic fall out of the solution. So one thing that I really wanted to tell you is that these hyperbolic functions, you'll see them in your book. There's a hyperbolic sine and a hyperbolic cosine and a hyperbolic tangent and a hyperbolic cotangent and all, all of the uh, those analogous terms to your regular trigonometric functions. So for instance, the hyperbolic sine uh, would be written not as a sin, like a sine function, but it'll say sinh. The h means a hyperbolic. So why are they named this way? Well, one thing I want to point out to you uh, that you may or may not actually know is the sine function I'm just giving you a little motivation here more than anything else sine of some angle theta okay you've been talking about this all through trigonometry and through calculus and you know what this means this is the projection of an angle uh, you know when you draw your unit circle it's the projection of that of that unit circle radius onto the y-axis that's what sine of theta means okay but it turns out when you study more advanced math the uh, the sine of a of an angle is written like this. It's written as e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta over two i. Okay, this thing right here is the true form of the sine function. Okay, so you can see that. And, and by the way, ask me what this is visually, and I couldn't tell you. Okay, this is you know this is a complex exponential. You've got e, which is this, the same e that you always know, raised to i, which is an imaginary number, uh, times theta that you have here, minus e to the minus i theta over 2i. The only reason I even bring it to you here, you'll study this in advanced math. This is what the sine function actually is if you were to write it down mathematically. Uh, the reason I say it is because the hyperbolic sine, sine h of some number x, is very, very similar, and that's why they call it hyperbolic sine. It's written as e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. Okay, so you see that right there? Hyperbolic sine is the sine function with all of the i's missing. Okay, so that's why they call it hyperbolic sine. Okay, so that's what I just wanted to point out to you. I don't want to study this in all its detail. I don't want to talk about this. This isn't all that terribly important. I'm just showing you by analogy why they call it a hyperbolic sine. It is a sine function with all of the i's stripped away. So you can kind of consider it to be almost like the real version of a, of a sine function. So if you haven't seen this version of what a sine really looks like, you'll, you'll get to it eventually in your math. This is the real form, the complex exponential representation of the sine function. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and clear the board because that was motivation more than anything. And now I'm going to present these hyperbolic functions to you uh, along with their derivatives and then we're going to solve some problems. Okay, so we just already talked about the first one. The hyperbolic sine of a number is e to that number minus e to the negative x over 2. Okay, if you take a number and plug it in here, and then you will be 